Wounded but not broken. With host Patrick Scroggins. As a U.S. Army attack helicopter pilot deployed in Iraq, Patrick faced a devastating crash, which resulted in him dying, losing a leg, and a slew of broken bones. Patrick's story of rehabilitation has helped others to overcome their own obstacles. Each week, Patrick recounts stories of inspiration and interviews guests who have overcome remarkable obstacles. This is Wounded But Not Broken with your host, Patrick Scroggins. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Wounded But Not Broken. Uh, really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, tonight, we're going to change it up a little bit. You've heard the past couple of weeks, we've had some uh, great, some very uh, heartfelt stories uh, from some veterans. Uh, tonight, we're going to go on the other side of that, and I want to I wanna highlight this part of the recovery process as well. There are, there are people in this country that devote their lives to helping wounded veterans, and I, did, I think it's such an amazing thing, and these people, I don't, although they don't want the recognition, I don't feel like they get enough of it. And uh, tonight, I have a gentleman on with me, Eddie Corona. He is, uh, he is the chairman of Outdoor Experience for All, and they do a lot, a lot for wounded veterans. And that's one of the things that we have in this country is, is great people willing to stand up and fill in the, the void when needed. And, you know, every, every veteran, every soldier has something they're passionate about, something that they love, something that drives them. And, you know, hunting and being in the outdoors and challenging yourself and having people push you and pushing yourself is one of the things that uh, I have seen change lives. And so tonight I would like to introduce Eddie Corona with Outdoor Experience for All. Eddie? Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me, Patrick. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. So just let's dive right into this, Eddie. So when did you start uh, Outdoor Experience for All and why? We started, uh, and I say we because my co-founder is Chris Denham. We started it in 2008, and uh, August of 2008 was our first time for Antelope. Uh, why did we start it? Uh, Chris and I volunteered for our di- numerous organizations, and uh, we felt we can do more uh, than just the, the few uh, outings that we were doing. And we started it for, with kids, where we can take children who have been diagnosed with the last one, they mail this children with prosthetics and disabilities, and children, children of our fallen heroes into the outdoors. And then in 2012, we included the veteran side. Uh, we pushed for legislation change uh, in Arizona, and then Arizona Game and Fish Department took it over, and they ran it up the flagpole and got it to where now we can also do the hunts for disabled veterans who qualify in Arizona. Uh, that, that's how it all started, why we did it. Uh, you know, the reality is uh, we want to make an impact. We want to make a difference. Uh, we did the children because the only way you can uh, change it change the future is through kids. 25% of today's population of children to 100% of our future. The fact that I can have this podcast with you right now as a drive home is because of our freedom. Those like yourself and many others who have served to allow me to, to sit there today and talk to you. And that, unfortunately, seems like today is something that is, is not appreciated or or not valued. And I want to make sure we want to make sure that you guys are valued for the sacrifice you made for me. Right. And so I think, you know, and I don't think that uh, the veterans get enough recognition for the, for everything they've sacrificed. I mean, even, even if you, you know, didn't get physically hurt, uh, every veteran is some, has some sort of mental or emotional hurt. I mean, you're gone from your family for a year at a time and, being in a combat zone, that high stress and that high, just living off that adrenaline, it's just very, it's a very difficult thing to do. And, uh, especially when you're coming back. Um, but so, you know, with, with the things that you've done, you've, you've pretty much, you've, you've pretty much retired, right? And you retired from your career and you just, you started doing this full time. When did you do that? Uh, I retired in July of 2008. 
I was in the auto industry, and that time the economy was booming. Uh, but, uh, you know, I went to my wife, and uh, I said, Karen, where do we sit? She goes, at that time? I said, yeah. She goes, you're good. Do what you want. So, uh, you know, started figuring out what I was going to do the rest of my life, and she she pretty much told me, you know, you increased Chris talked about doing some sort of nonprofit. Why don't you go figure it out? And it happened. And, uh, you know, Chris and I didn't think that we'd be here this long, and here we are, you know, uh, growing every year and and, uh, and trying to keep up. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's, you know, your wife is awesome. I mean, I've had the pleasure to, to get acquainted. I mean, you all are pretty much family to me. I mean, we've well, I've been out there a lot. But so can you explain um, – the process and kind of what you do, even for even for the kids, this, the process of how it goes and and the the life changing impact it has on people. Sure, we'll talk about the process with hunting part of it first. Uh, so in Arizona, there's a thing called the benevolent transfer clause, which allows someone who draws a permit, a big game permit, up here. Uh, when they draw a permit, they can either use it, let it go to waste, they can transfer it to a loan child, a grandchild between the age of 10 and under 18, or they can donate it to a nonprofit like ourselves. We can take that permit and transfer it to a child between the age of 10 and under 18 who has been diagnosed with a last pregnant illness or a child with a permanent disability. In 2014, House Bill 2303 was introduced that allows us to also transfer permits to disabled veterans. The qualification for that it's someone who's been someone who served our country, and while serving our country, they, they were injured, and the injury left them with the use of a mechanical device or another person with physical ability. The reality is, you know, what does that mean? Uh, I'm not a medically trained professional to make that determination. So what we do is, in our application process, we put the definition for the qualification of the application, and the doctor for the applicant signs off that they qualify. Uh, you know, so. And, and we, we gladly take, you know, any qualified individual out. Uh, last year, uh, just through this process, we were able to uh, to do 398 hunts in Arizona. Um, that's it. Well, and so with these with these with these hunts, just explain to the people of of the changes that you've seen. Uh, so just to back up a little bit, Eddie. Uh, Two weeks ago, I had Blaine Scott on, and he told his story, uh, and it's such a touching story. And I know you know Blaine. Um, yeah. So, what what have you seen in the, the impact and the changes that 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 you've witnessed on these on these hunts and the things that you do? Well, the hunt, you know, it kind of, it kind of works both ways. First of all, you know. Feedback. I'm always looking for feedback from our hunters and participants, whether it's a kid or a parent or a veteran, uh, you know, going out there and doing something different, uh, going out there and building more trust within yourself, uh, going out there and making an impact. Uh, but m- more than that is coming back a different person. Uh, numerous times our, our participants have, have said thank you over and over again because, you know, it made a different impact or the timing for going out and, and, and doing something different, getting them out of their normal uh, routine. Uh, I've had numerous uh, numerous veterans tell me that I saved their lives, and I'm like, you know, I don't know what to say at that point. I just kind of stay quiet because that's, you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for that comment. The same token, you know, it's like I, I'm, all I'm doing is taking them on the hunt. So, um, but, you know, it, it's uh it really, it's hard to answer that question sometimes because, especially when I told you about the people told me I saved their lives. I, you know, I, I'm I'm happy I'm able to do that. I'm happy that a, a simple service like this can make that big of an impact on someone. And when they share that, I know that I'm also being affected in a positive manner. That I know that my wife and I are doing the right thing. That Chris and I are doing the right thing of making an impact on someone else. Also makes an impact on mine. So uh, with you know. When we talk about our slogan of changing lives one adventure at a time, uh, the reason that's there is because it's not just them, it's also me. It's also us. Uh, together, we can have a positive influence in our own lives, uh, and hopefully um, that's that's what I'll leave with, and, and you know, and, and I want to do it again. 
it's an addiction. If you want to do it again, you want to do it again, you want to do it again, because it makes us feel good, and we know we're doing a positive impact. We're having a positive impact uh, just from the feedback that, we, that we've gotten. Right, and I know, I mean, just from experience of how, you know, that it's such a tight-knit group that you have out there in Arizona. It's like a big family, and everybody's so willing to give their time and stop everything they're doing to to help a veteran. I've witnessed it uh, more than once. And I've been a part of it more than once, and and it's such a it's such a great thing. Um, what kind of what do you do for kids now? I mean, I know I know what you do, but I'm just trying to get you to explain to the audience of you know what kids that you affect and and how how you help kids. Yeah, so um, in, in the Benevolent Transfer Clause, we do that portion of the hunting side where we take children who have been diagnosed with a life threatening illness or a child with a permanent disability. We transfer the permit. We take them out. Uh, when you think about cancer, it mainly a lot of kids we deal with. Uh, you know, when cancer hits uh, someone's family, the whole family dynamic comes to a halt, and then they try to piece it back together. Uh, if there is more than one sibling, the other siblings are asked to kind of uh, kind of step aside while mom and dad focus on that one child with a life-threatening illness, as I would if I was the parent, you know. Um, uh, and so they, when they do that, the other kids are, you know, obviously step aside and, and, and allow the parents to focus on that one child. Uh, through the process that we've been doing, we found that we were failing at that as an organization because we were focusing on the child uh, to, to come join us with only the child that was, has experienced a life threatening illness. But the reality, uh, the family dynamic, the rest of the uh, the family gets affected by that same illness, even though they, they did not have it. Uh, a child acts out um, that may not have it. When organizations like ourselves come in and that we praise and take those kids with the last of illness up in a camping trip or whatever trip, kind of trip it is, you know, when when they go back home and mom and dad are sitting at the dinner table with their family asking them, you know, how was your, you know, little Johnny, how was your trip over at camp, you know, cancer camp? And they talk about it. And they're not trying to be mean or anything, but the other kids have to sit there and listen to what a great time they had or that they got, you know, put on a pedestal. So what we do after we figured out that, you know, we want to be not only an impactful in the the child but also the family. How do we put the other kids on a pedestal? So once a child applies with us, what we do is uh, we talk to the parents and we say, great, little John is in program. Let's talk about the other kids. How many more other kids do you have? What do they like? Do you think they'd be interested in coming out? And we invite them to come out as volunteers. And those kids are working their tails off because they've never had that experience before. They also want to experience what John has been experiencing. So we put them on the pedestal. Uh, even though we can't transfer permits to them, we can buy permits for them, and we, and we take them out on hunts. We take them out on, on uh, volunteer excursions, whether it's a baseball game for the D-backs or whatever the case may be. You know, they, we get the chance to put them on the pedestal in hopes that we create a better environment around the dinner table, giving, uh, giving everyone a voice. So that way they can talk about their experiences throughout the whole camp or just in life in general. That's one of the biggest factors that I think uh, for us has made us extremely successful where we have a lot of the parents uh, who we do this with come back and volunteer. They're like, we don't want to leave. We want to, we want to learn more. Uh, and we constantly have a process in place to trying to uh, make it better. You know, a process is only there as good as, you know, as good as, as good as it gets. But you continually have to look at the process and try to make it better and try to make it better. Uh, that's one part we do. Uh, the other parts we do is we take kids uh, during the holidays and we go out and, and seek families who are less fortunate. And we go out there and shop for food, shop for gifts, wrap them all up, and have our own kids go deliver them to them. Uh, giving, them a, giving them that feeling to where they've always been given stuff, you know. But how do they give back? What does it feel like to give back? Sometimes I have kids that ask me, why do you do this for me? But because they've never experienced the feeling of giving. And so we take those kids out and we make them knock on the door, uh, have them deliver the gifts, bring in the food, and, and then we tell them at the end when we're having lunch, that's what it feels like to give. And so 
uh, instead of just talking about it, ex having to experience it. Uh, we also work with, uh, right now I'm working with a small community in southern Arizona with their uh, career center for the kids, community center for the kids, uh, where we go out hey, and Eddie, seek donations. Eddie, real quick. Yeah. Eddie, real quick, we got to, we're going to take a quick break, and then uh, we'll pick right back up where we left off. Let's, we got to hear a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. You're listening to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggin. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. My father was the, the best truck driver I've ever known in my life. Like a family tradition. I'm a truck driver myself. I drove around the state with my cat. To be the truck driver, you not just only see where you go, you see the world in the larger perspective. This is a really good time to be in the trucking industry. The dispatchers get good loads for them. The equipment is very new and then it's very reliable. At GTS Transportation, we make dreams come true by employing truck drivers, dispatchers, mechanics, and many other occupations. Consider joining our rapidly expanding team where we put quality, human dignity, and respect back into the workforce. Contact us by visiting our website at gtscarrier.com or call us at 847-754-4667. That number again, 847-754-4667. Dallas Corporation and Dallas Logistics, a proud supporter of the Veterans Radio Broadcast for over 15 years. High quality printing services and warehouse distribution have been our hallmark since 1985, serving Fortune 100 companies for over 35 years. Check us out at www.dallascorp.com. CBN. Veterans Broadcast Network brings you Wounded But Not Broken, hosted by Patrick Scroggin. It lies within you to conquer your greatest challenges. Patrick tackles the stories of how others faced unthinkable odds and then at a pivotal moment, a change occurred within them that gave them the strength, attitude, and direction to excel beyond the greatest expectations. Listen every week and learn how it is possible to defeat the impossible. Welcome back to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggins. Everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're here with Eddie Corona, uh, the founder uh, of Outdoor Experience for All. We're talking about uh, the things that they do, and I just want to say uh, I wanted to title this show "Selflessness" because uh, this is truly what it is. I mean, Eddie has given up, uh, you know, a lot of his life to do what he does and to help people and to help wounded soldiers and and terminally ill kids. And I think, you know. That is one of the most honorable, selfless things that you could possibly do. And I know Eddie probably didn't want me to say that, but that's okay. We're a thousand miles apart and you can't reach me. So, uh, I really wanted to say that, but Eddie, I know you were talking about, uh, about with the kids and uh, I'll just let you continue where you left off. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, I was saying that one of the things we're doing right now is working with a, a small community of, uh, of Southern Arizona where our kids in the big city of Phoenix get a chance to uh, pull somewhere else, where in rural Arizona, where they can see it's like, wow, simple thing as a soccer ball or or, or or a wheelchair. We delivered a power wheelchair to one of the kids down there. And, I mean, it, it was amazing uh, what both parties got, the kids there, the community there, plus our kids, uh, where they received, uh, you know, the rewards, I guess you can call it, from either one. But I think the, the biggest thing we do for kids is empower them. Empower them to 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 uh, be better. Uh, we also, what we do for them is let them know 
give them the security because let them know that we're always there with them or for them. Uh, I, you know, we've gone to football games, baseball games, volleyball games, softball games. I've been to a wedding. We've gone to bar mitzvahs. Uh, we've gone to quinceañeras. You know, we've uh, fortunately we've gone to funerals too. And uh, but if you're going to make an impact in the child's life, you can't do it one time. You got to be there all all the time. So if you really want to make a difference, you got to be there all the time. And that's that's our goal as an organization is to be there for that child and uh, and, and and for the parent to help them out. And we do progress reports on the kids as well. Kids having issues at school, you know, I get numerous phone calls from parents. Can you talk to them? I said, sure, can't put a little on the phone. And uh, we have conversations about success. We have conversations about sacrifice. We have conversations about choices. Um, and thank God that the kids respect me enough that, that they listen, you know. And uh, and I'm, I'm truly blessed to have that that trust, that they trust me that much. And uh, it's not something that is just given to you. It's uh, something that you earn, uh, you know, and, and I'm lucky to have it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And I know um, you you actually you integrate the two, right? You'll bring sometimes you'll bring uh, wounded veterans in to mentor the kids and hunt with the kids, right? Yeah, that was uh, done. Uh, I got to talk. We did that in Colorado, and uh, it was kind of a it wasn't done on purpose per se, but the results we got out of it was just amazing. We had one of our veterans, Brian Myers, up there, and uh, Brian was there, and we had three kids, and the kids are all cancer kids. And over dinner, we we're talking about, you know, things, you know, like the parents are talking about what's going on with each child, um, kind of just throwing it out there. It's like, you know, my child, you know, has leukemia, has had leukemia. This is the stuff that happened. Next one goes up, blah, 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 blah. And Brian he goes, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to share something. He goes, you know, it's when, he, when he was talking about what happened to him and he got blown up and stuff like that. He goes, the difference between me and, and those kids. He goes, I signed up for this. They did, and that right there just blew my mind because it's true, you know. And uh, the different respect for for our veterans, different point of view for the children going through that stuff. The fact that the veteran knew that they signed up to potentially that could happen to them, including die, and they still had the courage to go out there and do that. And the child who didn't sign up for for cancer, yet yeah, they got it, and they still have the courage and the strength and the belief that they're going to be okay. Uh, you know, so when you think about that, hold on. It's pretty far yeah, away. I, I know it's I know it's emotional to talk about this stuff, and that's fine. I got I get emotional as well, and I'm getting emotional just listening to it because it, it is such a powerful message, and it, it's it's so powerful to, um, you know, to be in your place and see what you see. I mean, when I come out, I only get to see my little piece. You get to see the whole puzzle, right? And so I, I can only imagine uh, the uh, emotions that you go through, uh, you know, on them trips. Yeah, it's a roller coaster. Uh, there's uh, it, it's part of the job, I guess you could say. You know, it's uh, the first time it happened. I was coming back from a camp with kids and stuff like that. Super great camp. Everything was awesome. And I'm like, man, it couldn't have got any better. You know, the reality hit when I thought about I'm going back to my life the way it was. And I started thinking about the kids' life. They're going back to that struggle. And then, of course, I lost it. And, uh, you know, uh, ever since, and I've never, I don't care if I get emotional. I just keep telling myself, it's part of what I do. You know, uh, and uh, so, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, the tears of joy and uh, Tears of pain and tears of uh, the opportunity to make a, a difference. 
hand out. Yeah, I mean, that's but, uh, that's what it is. I mean, it's just being a compassionate human being. And, you know, you can't, see the, you know, do the things that you do and meet the people that you meet knowing that, you know, maybe in a week or two or a month they may not be here, especially when they're kids. I mean, that would, you know, that would be devastating for anybody, especially when you make that kind of bond with that family and, you know, knowing that, that they, that, you know, their number's up. I mean, it's coming and that, that's, that's tough. And Brian is absolutely right. Where as veterans and soldiers, we chose to go do it. We knew what was on the line and, you know, these kids have no choice, just like you said. And it, it, I, in a lot of ways, it, I, I couldn't, it would be a much tougher, um, much tougher situation if I didn't have the choice. I made the choice to, to go do what I did and, I'm, I suffered the consequences of it, and, you know, I just chose to overcome it and become everything I could be, um, not to not to give a salute out to the Marine slogan or anything, but I know you got a couple in the truck. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing, amazing thing you do. And um, what's, what's your most memorable, uh, memorable experience thus far? Oh man, where do you where do you begin? What, what, you know, it's uh, you know, uh, I know that's a tough question because that 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 would that would I mean I know everything you do is memorable and I know that you have great memories with all the people that you surround yourself with. And, but I guess like what, there has to be one kid or one family that has stood out to you. And that doesn't mean that any of the other ones didn't, but there, there ha there's always something. You know, uh, the most memorable thing, there's the, our first kid, Thomas Wittenhofer. Out of, uh, at that point he was out of Winter Garden, Florida, then he moved to Butler, Pennsylvania. Thomas had a brain tumor. Um, and, he was one of our keynote speakers at our fundraiser. And uh, when he was diagnosed again with a brain tumor, um, they, he, didn't, he, he told him he was terminal. He was done. And, uh, you know, going back to Butler, Pennsylvania, Chris and I, I don't want to go. I did not want to go. I wanted to stay home because, you know, how do you go say goodbye to a kid? You know, this kid's going to die. He knows he's going to die. You know he's going to die. How do you goodbye? But I, I thank God that I managed to listen to Chris, listen to my wife, and have the courage to go make this happen. And, uh, you know, the, the words that Thomas said to me, that that was... That I made a better impact in his life, that I made him happy. And uh, he was the reason why we started Outdoor Experience. He was the first kid we ever took out. Um, and uh, as far as the most memorable, that's it. That's it. That conversation, yeah. that experience, is what drives me every day to do this. Well, I um, and I mean to be honest with you, Eddie. I mean, I'm I'm a better person because uh, of your of outdoor experience for all and the experiences that I've had with it, and the experiences and the people that I've met. I mean, like I said, it's like an extended family. I mean, everybody. There's a lot of people that still text me, you know, uh, and see how everything's doing. And I haven't seen them for a year, but this ask the when I'm coming out again, and and I know it's such a, a I can't even explain of how much that, you know, everybody out there has touched my life. Um, you know, I'm sorry to ask you that hard question. I know it's a very difficult one and, um, you know, I didn't want you to have to alienate anybody, but you know, there's always something that starts it or, and that was perfect. You know, that was the first kid that you took hunting and, and that really motivated you and really touched your heart. And, you know, that's just compassion, man. And, and, uh, you know, that's just, that's a true act of selflessness of what, what you've done with this. And, um, you know, it's such a great, great thing that you're doing. I really appreciate it. And, uh, 
But I, we're going to break uh, for our sponsors, give you a couple minutes, Eddie, to recover there, give a break for our sponsors, and uh, we'll be right back, and we're going to tell some uh, wounded soldier funny stories when we come back. Okay. You're listening to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggins. Attention, looking for semi-drivers nationwide. GTS Transportation of Burr Ridge, Illinois, is looking to hire a partner with experienced CDL holders in every state. If you are going to drive, why not drive for the best? Whether you are driving solo, as a team, or as an owner-operator, GTS is looking to add you to their rapidly growing company. Become part of one of the most respected, driver-friendly, and successful transportation companies in America, where drivers are treated as royalty. Contact us at gtscarrier.com. Again, gtscarrier.com. Or call us at 847-754-4667. That number again, 847-754-4667. We would love to help you, which in turn helps everyone. GTS is an equal opportunity employer. Dallas Corporation and Dallas Logistics, a proud supporter of the Veterans Radio Broadcast for over 15 years. High quality printing services and warehouse distribution have been our hallmark since 1985, serving Fortune 100 companies for over 35 years. Check us out at www.dallascorp.com. CBN. Veterans Broadcast Network brings you Wounded But Not Broken, hosted by Patrick Scroggin. It lies within you to conquer your greatest challenges. Patrick tackles the stories of how others faced unthinkable odds and then at a pivotal moment, a change occurred within them that gave them the strength, attitude, and direction to excel beyond the greatest expectations. Listen every week and learn how it is possible to defeat the impossible. Welcome back to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggins. All right, everybody, welcome back to Wounded But Not Broken. I hope everybody took that couple of minutes to dry their eyes and uh, gather themselves. I know that was, uh, it was very difficult, Eddie. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. Um, but, you know, uh, the things need to be said. I mean, the, you know, the, the true, raw, you know, emotions need to come out about, about this stuff, whether it's veterans or kids. And, and I think that's, uh, pretty honorable for you to do that. And I really appreciate it. So, so I'm going to flip it on you now. What's your most memorable wounded soldier hunt? Or experience. Ah, oh, man, there are so many of those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had a group of veterans um, just this past year come out. They're all women, um, and all these ladies are out here archery hunting for Havelina. And some of the things they said made me blush, which was funny. Because, <laughs> you know, you know me. That's that's pretty tough to do. Yeah. And, you know, I, I didn't know how to experience it. I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know a lot of stuff, right? And just everything's a little different, you know, especially in today's world where, you know, you got you can't say this or you can't say that or, you know, everything's offensive. So, uh, but no, um, they definitely taught me uh, a lot about veterans, not just the guys, but also the women. Um, I think that, for me, I, I really, really appreciated um, the knowledge that they had, you know, and, and um, the, the male veteran versus the female veteran, there is no difference, but they go to something just a little different. Um, uh, a lot more emotional, but with the same token, you know, uh, and they're tough. They are tough, 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 tough. And um, I think that was probably the most memorable hunt um, with with uh, with my veterans was 
is definitely uh, those ladies. Uh, F bombs, yeah, like every other word. Uh, you know, <laughs> gas tasks, yeah, yeah. what? Well, yeah. You know, it's just different, <laughs> just different uh, stuff that I didn't expect. Yeah. Definitely appreciate. It. Well, I mean, it, when you when you get when you get a group together, I mean, uh, you know, it's there's always shenanigans that go on, and it, because so what what it does for veterans, it kind of takes them out of that everyday routine that they're that they're have become accustomed to after getting out of the military, and it kind of puts them back into that military team brotherhood mindset. And when you get soldiers together, some of the most uh, <laughs> crazy things on earth happen. It's it's insane. Uh, you know, just the camaraderie. Even if even if the guys don't know each other, within 20 minutes, it's everything's everything's natural. Right. So it is. Uh, that one. And I think the the other one we were doing an elk count with uh, a couple of guys. Um, uh, we, we were up in Unit 23 with uh, Waylon Pettit. We had this guy with his missing leg out there hunting with us. And, you know, he's tough, 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 tough. He forgot his bow. He won't admit it. But he left his bow on the other side of the mountain. Do you know his name? Yes, Eddie. I know his name. It was me. And my guide was carrying the bow. Not to put it on him, uh, but I did. I left it. I left it. It went on the other side, but it was on top. I did. I left it. Thanks, Eddie, for telling the story. It's awesome. Continue. Yeah, so you know, you and you and Whaling go the hell out there chasing that bulls. You don't kill anything. You come all the way back and and ask you what are you what are you planning to shoot. And you look at him. He looks at you like, oh crap. Lucky you, Whaling volunteer to go back and pick it up. I would have sent you myself, but that would have been me. Yeah, no, that was that was a long day, man. I remember we had that bull down in well, we had like six bulls down in the valley bugling, and Whaling and I hauled butt up to get up on the ridge to get ahead of him. And I did let an arrow loose and it hit a branch uh, and it went right over that bull's back. back. That was such a good bull. Man, that was a fun hunt. Um, but I ended up, yeah. if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly though, after Waylon did go get my bow, I'll, I'll give it to you. Um, I think, didn't we get on the gator and we went and, and accomplished the mission, right? Within like an hour. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. We had a, we had to make sure that, uh, that other bull that we had tied up, you know, didn't get away. <laughs> <laughs> he might as well have been. He was eight yards away. No. Eight yards away. It, it, you know, Eagle, and that was the the cool part is, uh, you know, I brought that story up because I've never told you this, and I'm afraid to say it because it might go to your head. Um, but you know, that was the first time that uh, we were doing something like this, and, and you, you were a guinea pig for us. So. Uh, Going us to do that bull elk hunt, and um, it was a cool experience for me because your excitement, you were so excited, you were just super pumped, and you know to see someone that that excited about harvesting a bull with their bow, especially when they're bugling, they can, they, I believe that bull was just going nuts, and uh, you know when you when you're able to get the deal done, that was a reward for me. Oh. Uh, and it was for me as well. That was such a memorable experience. I'll never forget. I mean, Waylon, it just worked out perfectly. That that bull came within, I, it was like eight or ten yards when I let the arrow go. I mean, it was amazing. And I, when he bugled the last time, I could feel it in my chest. But, uh, uh -huh. yeah, that was a fun hunt. You and I have done a couple of fun hunts. We we did that uh, coos deer hunt where we sit out there down to the wire. I was about ready to have to fly home we were we were down within a few minutes of having to leave when Waylon spotted that that coos deer and uh ended up getting that one done and, and we hiked down to get him and uh anyways that that was that was a memorable hunt because everything just came down to the, literally five minutes of us leaving yeah talk about do you that, remember you that know, one or oh, oh, that was a blast that was an absolute blast my, my truck was overheating we had to stop over and pull over a lot uh, yeah, all, all kinds of stuff happened. Hold on one second. It did. Uh, but yeah, so anyway. I think the big thing, the big thing with all of this is, is just how Eddie has devoted, you know, his entire 
pretty much a dull life lately as of late to to help people. And, you know, the honorable the honor in that is just it just astounds me. I mean, I know Eddie's helped me. I've Eddie's helped, you know, a bunch of my friends and you know, like I said, it's like a big family and, and guys continue to go back out there uh, tonight actually. He's got two Marines with him that he's just coming off of a hunt. So he took time out of a out of his busy day to do this with us and and um you know, it's such an awesome thing and, and uh, Eddie, what do you the cool thing about yeah. being on the podcast right now, if I can show you a video of who's unloading my truck, who do you think that is? The two Marines. The video of who's unloading. Yeah, two Marines. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> two, two Marines, and no, they only got two good legs with them. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> one's got a right leg, one's got a left leg. Yeah. Yeah. What's um so I know that you know with your I've been a keynote speaker at your fundraiser. You you do uh-huh. one fundraiser a year, correct? Correct. And when when is yes. that usually? We're gonna have this here uh and twenty twenty two it's gonna be on uh, May fourteenth. Uh May every 14th. year. Yeah, it's been a, you know what a blessing it is to be able to share this story with you. Um in two thousand and nine we had our first fundraiser at uh, a friend of mine by the name of uh, Thomas Paz, he, he was uh, worked at a tank in the Army. We call him Tank. Uh, he was part of a tank crew, and uh, his, his uh, daughter got married, and they were having a reception at this place on a Thursday. And she married uh, um, a gentleman who was going to join the Army, so he was already in the Army, got married. Well, they had set up a date for the reception, but someone forgot to tell the Army there was a reception going on, and they shipped him overseas. And so the place was prepaid, and he uh, he donated it to us. We had two weeks to put something together, and somehow, you know, divine intervention, if you believe in it, we were able to, uh, you know, have 100 people show up, pay, pay the money to come show up and, and just support what we were doing. And that's how our first fundraiser started, and we didn't really know. Chris and I didn't know what the hell we were doing. You know, we were just like, hey, yeah, we've been to plenty of fundraisers. We could figure this thing out. No, <laughs> you know, it's a different story. <laughs> Attending them versus putting them together is a different story. So the following year we did another one. The following year we did another one. Uh, right now we just moved into a new location that houses 800 people. And uh, we've been fortunate wow. enough to, um, to uh, be able to to grow it. Every year we uh, every year we sell out. Every year it's been... Um, you know, successful, successful, successful. This past year, I got to give it to our sponsors. I got to give it to our donors. I got to give it to our supporters. We had the best year ever, and uh, we were able to really bring the money in uh, to be able to make a, a big impact on what we're doing. To the point is, you know, how do how do we get the word out to more veterans? Um, you know, that came about because we have to, uh, you know, we got to advertise. We got to advertise to them that we're here. You know, because the HIPAA laws, right. they can't go to the VA or to a children's hospital. And, hey, give me the name of all the kids or give me the name of all the veterans we can help. It doesn't work out that way. A long time it used to, but not anymore. So now, you know, the only way to reach them is by advertising. So we hired uh, a professional advertising company to help us, to help us help our future applicants or future guests out there to get more of them, uh, to see the impacts that we're making, the impacts we're making on ourselves and, you know, we definitely want to spread the wealth, and the only way to do that is to let people know you're alive and to let them know that you exist and let them know there's an opportunity, let them know all that stuff. So the only way to do it is through advertisement. So we spend, uh, you know, we started this year with uh, uh, trying, to, trying to do our best to, to get the word out. Um, and that's been, that's been pretty cool because we're receiving more and more people, more and more applicants coming in, not only from Arizona but throughout the United States. And so, so we know it's working. We know it's worth it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then, hey, we're gonna we're gonna break again for a word from our sponsors. When we come back, uh, I want to tell one more story that I that I had with you, Eddie, and uh, it's a funny one. But uh, yeah, we'll be right back and a word from our sponsors. You're listening to Wounded but Not Broken. 
with host Patrick Scroggin. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. My father was the, the best truck driver I've ever known in my life. Like a family tradition. I'm a truck driver myself. I drove around the state with my cat. To be the truck driver, you not just only see where you go, you see the world in the larger perspective. This is a really good time to be in the trucking industry. The dispatchers get good loads for them. The equipment is very new and then it's very reliable. At GTS Transportation, we make dreams come true by employing truck drivers, dispatchers, mechanics, and many other occupations. Consider joining our rapidly expanding team where we put quality, human dignity, and respect back into the workforce. Contact us by visiting our website at gtscarrier.com or call us at 847-754-4667. That number again, 847-754-4667. Dallas Corporation and Dallas Logistics, a proud supporter of the Veterans Radio Broadcast for over 15 years. High-quality printing services and warehouse distribution have been our hallmark since 1985, serving Fortune 100 companies for over 35 years. Check us out at www.dallascorp.com. VBN, Veterans Broadcast Network, brings you Wounded But Not Broken, hosted by Patrick Scroggin. It lies within you to conquer your greatest challenges. Patrick tackles the stories of how others faced unthinkable odds and then at a pivotal moment, a change occurred within them that gave them the strength, attitude, and direction to excel beyond the greatest expectations. Listen every week and learn how it is possible to defeat the impossible. Welcome back to Wounded But Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggin. Hello, welcome back to Wounded But Not Broken here with Eddie Caroon and Outdoor Experience for All. And uh, we're just talking about some uh, soldier stories. I wanted to share a story. One of my most memorable hunts uh, was with Eddie. And although he couldn't keep up with me, but uh, we were uh, hunting <laughs> elk. With, we were hunting rifle elk, and uh, that's the one I, I talked about in uh, in my story to where uh, I busted open the end of my leg and I ended up um, super gluing it on that hunt and not telling anybody. And then I got super infected, and I went back and I ended up having I sewed it up myself with fish and line, which was the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. It got really infected, and and uh, but that hunt. Uh, was such a eye opener for me of what I felt like I was going to be capable of um, because Arizona it was in September but it was really hot and I don't know how much uh, liquids I went through or how much I did sweat but my problem was is I didn't want to stop to take my leg off to drain the sweat out of it often enough and so it just really uh, affected me uh, my my health I guess but it was worth it because it was such a great experience, and that's really when I when I got to that's you know Eddie and I really got to know each other on that hunt and got to share stories and I, I got to find out what that uh, nonprofit is about and and it's such a it's such a great thing and, and they do a lot of uh, a lot of good for a lot of different people and uh, that hunt Eddie do you remember that hunt? Sure do. Um... Yeah, I remember he was using his, his leg as, a, as an excuse of always having to stop. My leg is sweaty. My leg is sweaty. I got to drain it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys it was, up great hunt. it was an awesome hunt. He 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 was so determined to uh, to accomplish the goal, and you did. You did. You, you made a great shot. You worked your tail off. Uh, if anybody gets a chance to see the video, um, I'll put it on. OE4A.org, or better yet, on uh, our Facebook page for Outdoor Experience, the number for all. Outdoor Experience for all. Um, Patrick is red, red, red from all of a sudden. And uh, 
It was it was very hot. You know, and uh, well, he stuck it out, and you uh, made a great shot. I was fortunate enough to be there, uh, and I say that because, for the most part, it's not about me being there. It's about the veteran's experience. Um, I think that's the most important thing, and uh, you know, the fact that I was there when you, when you were able to harvest that bowl, a beautiful bowl. I mean, I, I I think I was I'm very lucky to be there. I know you made a great shot. It was a great hunt. A lot of a lot of great things. Um, you know, yeah, we fun. walked our butts off on that hunt. Yes, you did. I'll be honest with you, I didn't walk that far. No, you, did. Did. you You weren't there every step with me. But I think my most memorable, the funniest part about that hunt, do you remember when we were right on the edge of the uh, Indian Reservation and that other group of hunters, they had their spotters up on the on the plateau, and we were coming across there in the dark, and the sun was just coming up. And because there was a big bull in the area and you heard or somebody in our team heard their team talking and they're like, hey, you all better hurry up. They're they're moving in on the area. And that guy, he goes, the guy goes, holy shit, that guy's only got one leg and he's hauling ass or something. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were cooking it across that, that area and uh, those guys were just like, wait a minute. The whole, uh, it worked out, though, because you, the, the leg distraction, you know, they're like, do them off their game. <laughs> yeah, not not to mention I was going as fast as I possibly could when you all said there was another group coming in on that elk. But, um, yeah, that was such a that was such a fun hunt. But so Eddie, just tell the listeners real quick how they can uh, how they can get in uh, and view Outdoor Experience for All, and you know what yeah. they could do to help and or uh, get involved. Yeah, as far as uh, involvement, um, in, you guys can call me directly. Uh, I'm gonna. Give you my, my cell phone. It's uh, 480-529-8340. And uh, you can call me anytime. Um, Outdoor Experience for All, um, www.oe4a.org or Outdoor Experience for All.org. There's an application process that we go through. Uh, you know, my email address is corona, C O R O N A, the number 2000 at cox.net. I'll be there like that. Um, you know, any questions at all, any questions at all. Even if you don't think you qualify, you call me. You call me. My my job is to help you get into the program without breaking the rules, you know, and uh, that's what we do. Cause it's truly not up to you or up to me. It's up to your doctor. Let the doctor tell us whether you qualify or not. And if your doctor says yes, let's make it happen. I'm all in. Um, that's about it, Patrick. Okay. Well, Eddie, I know that, uh, I mean, you can stay on if you want. I really appreciate uh, you taking your time out of your night. I know you had a couple of soldiers hunting, and you were headed back tonight, and I know that your wife is probably excited to see you, or maybe she's not. I don't know. Make sure you <laughs> tell her I said hi. I will. <laughs> but, um, can I say one last thing? And absolutely. You know, talking about my wife, Karen, uh, she is the reason why I can be on this phone call. You know, it was her idea for her to... And I retired to go make it happen. And, uh, you know, she holds the fort down, you know, because my nonprofit is a nonprofit. No one gets paid, including myself. And if it wasn't for her saying, you know, go make the difference for both of us, you know, I wouldn't be having this conversation. So I got I just got to give her a shout out. That's all. Thanks for, no, thanks absolutely. For and she deserves it because, you know, I know your wife very well. Um, and she is an amazing woman, and she has to be to put up with you. But that's Boy. a side note. Different conversation, but no, yeah, it, for real though, you you know, you and your wife, I mean, you, what you do, Eddie, is super selfless, and it's just, it's an amazing testament of how great this country is, and this is why this is the best country on earth, is because we have people like you and your wife. Thank you. And, and uh, uh, I want to thank you for having me on. Uh, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, it's always great to tell my story and to tell our story. Uh, it's always great to to make an impact and and you know even though we don't ask for it i appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to allow me to be part of your show oh man anything anything for you eddie for what you do is the least i can do and i really appreciate you taking the time thank you and so that's that's one thing actually real quick you know if we we got i don't know about six to eight minutes left uh of the show and i just wanted to let anybody know if they wanted to call in and, and they have a question of me or 
or something I could help them with, uh, you can call in at 516-453-9948. That's 516-453-9948. Um, but I want to talk about uh, nonprofits really quick. And uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of nonprofits uh, after, you know, after the or during the war. There's a lot of nonprofits that got stood up. And, and unfortunately, um, there's a few that gave all a bad name, and we all know how that goes. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, there, there's – so many great nonprofits out there, and there's so many people that do, you know, amazing things for wounded veterans and kids and all that. And I, I would just, I'd really like to encourage people to do their due diligence and research about the nonprofits and, you know, the impacts that they have, and you know, even where their money's allocated and, and this and that, because. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's been people that have gotten gotten taken advantage of, and you know, and that's a very unfortunate thing that it happens. Um, but the, you know, a, a true nonprofit, all their stuff is out there in the open to see. And um, you know, I think it's I think it's a wonderful thing that that we experience in this country. We have a lot of people that that love to help, and you know, there's a lot in Arizona. I mean, there's I could sit here and name you know everybody that that. Eddie's talked about that helps and you know they don't they really don't want to be known for it but you know they they deserve the recognition and Eddie you definitely deserve the recognition and you know I hope you continue to continue to do what you do which I know you will and uh, I'm going to make this year's fundraiser somehow and uh, you know I can't wait to to see you again man it's been a while yeah oh yeah we'd love to have you and uh, anyone else who wants to attend uh, you know we always have a keynote speaker and uh, you know and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great fun. It's for a great cause. There's many great causes, and but no greater cause than the one I run, of course. You know. But you know, <laughs> thank you very much, yeah. <laughs> for yeah, uh, for having us. That was my dog Waffles barking at me. All right, man. Hey, thank you, and uh, you have a good evening. I really appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. And also, I just want to say to the listeners that if anybody uh, has any uh, nonprofits that help out wounded soldiers or any stories or anything that you'd like to submit to me to talk about, I, I would be more than happy to do the research and do it. it uh, you can email me at patrick at veteransradiohour.com. That's patrick at veteransradiohour.com. And, uh, you know, I'd look forward to, to hearing what people have to say. And... Um, you know, I, it's a very touching story that we had tonight, and I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, hopefully, everybody got something out of it, and uh, you know, hopefully, it, it touches somebody in some way or another. And that's that's why that's why we're doing this. And we really appreciate the support. Thank you for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. We're going to have another great story from a wounded veteran next week. You're listening to Wounded but Not Broken with host Patrick Scroggins. Attention, looking for semi-drivers nationwide. GTS Transportation of Burr Ridge, Illinois, is looking to hire a partner with experienced CDL holders in every state. If you are going to drive, why not drive for the best? Whether you are driving solo, as a team, or as an owner-operator, GTS is looking to add you to their rapidly growing company. Become part of one of the most respected, driver-friendly, and successful transportation companies in America, where drivers are treated as royalty. Contact us at gtscarrier.com. Again, gtscarrier.com. Or call us at 847-754-4667. That number again, 847-754-4667. We would love to help you, which in turn helps everyone. GTS is an equal opportunity employer. Dallas Corporation and Dallas Logistics, a proud supporter of the Veterans Radio broadcast for over 15 years. High quality printing services and warehouse distribution have been our hallmark since 1985, serving Fortune 100 companies for over 35 years. Check us out at www.dallascorp.com. CBN. Veterans Broadcast Network brings you Wounded But Not Broken, hosted by Patrick Scroggin. It lies within you to conquer your greatest challenges. 
Kirkpatrick tackles the stories of how others faced unthinkable odds and then at a pivotal moment, a change occurred within them that gave them the strength, attitude, and direction to excel beyond the greatest expectations. Listen every week and learn how it is possible to defeat the impossible.